Okay, good morning, <coughs> excuse me, and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Daniel Drum and I'm the chair of the committee. Uh, we've been joined today by Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Andy Cohen, Councilmember and Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, who is also the chair of the uh, Council's uh, Subcommittee on Capital for Finance, uh, Councilmember Margaret Chin, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Steve Matteo, and Councilmember Barry Grudenchik. Um, today, the committee has six items on the agenda. Three pre-considered resolutions to amend and restate the property tax rates for fiscal 2019. Two bid-related pre-considered resolutions and intro 1144, which would authorize 14 bids to increase their assessments. We've been joined by Council Member Helen Rosenthal. Uh, let's start with the three pre-considered resolutions that would amend and restate the property tax rates for fiscal 2019. Every year, as part of budget adoption, the Charter requires the Council to adopt property tax rates for the coming fiscal year. The rates that we adopt are largely predetermined by a formula set forth in state law, which involves determining the share of the overall tax levy that each class is required to pay. State law imposes a 5% cap on the amount of, that each class's share is allowed to grow year over year. In past years, the Council has asked the state to lower that cap as a way of moderating large increases in tax rates that result from this required formula. This year, we saw that without any action, the tax rate for Class 1 homeowners would have gone up by, excuse me, by 7.2% as compared to last year's rates. Therefore, to limit that increase, the Council asked the state to pass legislation to lower the class share cap to one half of 1%. The state agreed, but the legislation was enacted after the Council adopted the fiscal 2019 budget and set the tax rates. Therefore, what we are doing today is amending and restating the tax rates that we set in June to reflect the recalcul rec recalculation done in accordance with the new 0.5% cap. As a result of the Council's efforts, a typical Class 1 homeowner will see an approximate $250 savings and Class 2 homeowners will see a tax rate decrease of nearly 1% as compared to the fiscal 2018 rate. Next, we have the bid resolutions. The first is a pre-considered resolution that sets forth November 28, 2018 at 10 a.m. in this room as the date, time, and place to hold a public hearing considering the local law that would establish the Throgs Neck bid in Councilmember Joni's district in the Bronx. Councilmember Joni is supportive of the bid's establishment. The second bid item is also pre-considered resolution that sets forth November 28, 2018 at 10 a.m. in this room as the date, time, and place to hold a public hearing considering the local law that would extend the Hudson Square bid in the Speaker's District and would authorize the bid to increase its annual assessment. The Speaker is supportive of these actions. More information regarding the proposed Throgs Neck bid and the proposed changes to the Hudson Square bid can be found at the committee report uh, it can be found in the committee reports prepared by the Finan Finance Division, as well as the bids district plans, which have been posted to the Council's website. Last, the committee will be holding a public hearing on intro number 1144, which would authorize 14 existing bids throughout the city to increase the amounts they expend annually. The Council previously approved Resolution 564 on October 31st, setting today as the date for a public hearing on this legislation. The budget increases have been requested by the property owners within the boundaries of each bid and would be used to enhance the services provided. The 14 bids that are seeking budget increases are, one, the Steinway Street bid in Councilmember Constantinides and Councilmember Van Bremer's district. Two, the Graham Avenue bid in Councilmember Levin and Councilmember Reynoso's districts. Three, the Lower East Side bid in Councilmember Chin's district. Four, the Fashion Center bid in the Speaker's district. Five, the Grand Street bid in Councilmember Reynoso's district. Six, the 125th Street bid in Councilmember Perkins' district. Seven, the Lincoln Square bid in the Speaker and Councilmember Rosenthal's district. Eight, the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid in the Speaker and Councilmember Powers and Councilmember Rivera's districts. Nine, the Queens Plaza Court Square bid, sometimes referred to as the Long Island City bid in Councilmember Van Bremer's district. 10, the Bay, the Bay Ridge 5th Avenue bid in Councilmember Brannon's district. 11, the Court Livingston Skirmerhorn bid in Councilmember Levin's district. 
12, the Park Slope Fifth Avenue bid in Council Member Lander and Council Member Menchaca's district. Uh, 13, the, the Chinatown bid in Council Member Chin's district. And 14, the Westchester Square bid in Council Member Joe Nye's district. Each of these council members has submitted a letter in support of the requested budget increases. More information regarding the specific amounts of the assessment increases and the reasons for the request can be found in the committee report prepared by the Finance Division. Representatives from the Department of Small Business Services are here to testify on this bid item and to answer any questions we may have. Now, before we proceed to a vote, I'm going to ask Councilmember Chin to uh, make a statement, and then uh, we have some testimony as well. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Um, as a representative of a district that includes two uh, low Manhattan bids requesting reasonable assessment increases, the Chinatown bid and the Lower East Side bid, I believe this adjustment, adjustment serves as a way to allow these organizations to continue operating as a vital resources for our neighborhood. An adjusted assessment would explore a pathway for the city to address important needs, including expanded programming, rising office rents, and a better opportunity for bids to comply with the $15 minimum wage while continuing to provide the necessary funds to ensure fair wages for all employees. And it will create a chance for these organizations to continue delivering the services and programs that local property owners, small businesses, and residents alike have all come to expect without being subjected to crippling financial risk. Um, I really urge my colleague uh, to support uh, these requests uh, by our bid. They do tremendous work in our community, especially uh, the two bid in my district, and I really respect all their hard work to keep our community uh, prosperous and strong, so I'm here to show my support. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to call three uh, folks who want to give testimony. Uh, Michael Blaze Backer um, from the Department of Small Business Services, Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood uh, Development Division. Uh, Rexanne Early, uh, Small Business Services, uh, Director of Business Improvement District Programs. And James Karras from the Manhattan Borough President's Office. And um, I'm going to ask Council to swear you all in. Do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Yes. I do. OK, uh, let's start over here. All right. Good morning, Chair Drum and members of the Finance Committee. I am Michael Blaze Backer, Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. I'm joined by Roxanne Early from the uh, directs our bid program. I wish to express our support for the law providing an increase in the amount to be expended in 14 business improvement districts. The City's 75 bids invest over $145 million into local economies in the form of supplemental services and programs that serve more than 93,000 businesses across the city. Bids have been valuable and proven partners in ongoing initiatives of neighborhood revitalization and economic development across the five boroughs, making New York City neighborhoods cleaner, safer, and more vibrant. Bids are also advocates for small businesses in their districts, helping them to navigate government, facilitating network among business owners, providing business retention support, and attracting shoppers to the area. In partnership with city government, bids help to improve the quality of life for New Yorkers and visitors, enhance the city's tax base, spur job creation, and strengthen local economies. Bids will typically request to increase the assessment on property owners in their district every three to 10 years. Assessment increases allow bids to expand existing services, add new programs, add staff capacity, or sustain current levels of programs and services impacted by rising contract costs, often connected to increases in minimum wage. Bid boards of directors will determine the new maximum cap for bid assessments, as well as whether to phase it in over multiple fiscal years based on the projected costs of programs and services. To propose an assessment increase, bids must complete a multi-step review process overseen by SBS. The bid board of directors, which includes local property owners, merchants, and residents, as well as representatives from the city comptroller, borough president, city council member, and SBS, must review and approve the proposed assessment increase. Additionally, SBS requires all bids to submit a four-part justification outlining, outlining how the increase will be allocated, minutes from the board meeting when the increase was approved, and letters of support by all city council members represented in the bid boundaries. SBS reviews these submitted materials and determines whether they are sufficient to bring the proposed increases to city council. 
Additionally, as required by law, each of the 14 bids publish a notice of the public hearing at least once in a local newspaper having general circulation in the districts, specifying the time and place of today's hearing and stating the proposed amount to be expended annually. Each district has also certified that they have mailed a letter to property owners informing them about the proposed assessment increase and the time and place of this public hearing. It is a priority of SBS that assessment increase proposals focus on enhancing programs and services provided to the commercial district. The 14 bids proposing assessment increases are doing so to address the needs and changing conditions of their districts. These increases will further expand, reinforce, and strengthen existing core services currently provided in the business districts and include funds for capital improvements, public clause activation, and added staff capacity. Additionally, portions of these increases will be used to sustain current levels of sanitation and public safety programs impacted by rising contract costs related to the increase in the minimum wage. The proposed increases for FY19 range from 97,900 to 4.2 million, varying according to budget size, district size, and proposed changes in programs and services. The proposed increases are as follows, and I'm going to read these, so bear with me. 125th Street from 1,005,793 to 1,240,462. Bay Ridge Fifth Avenue from 427,000 to $534,000. Chinatown from $1,300,000 to $1,800,000. Fort Livingston Skimmerhorn from $907,000 to $1,400,000. Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea from $2,200,000 to $3,250,000. Fashion Center from $8,800,000 to $13,000,000. Graham Avenue from $137,638 to $250,000. Grand Street from $226,460 to $324,360. Lincoln Square from $2,500,000 to $3,200,000. Queens Plaza Court Square from $800,000 to $1 million. Lower East Side from $974,600 to $1,300,000. Park Slope Fifth Avenue from $300,000 to $500,000. Steinway Street from $400,000 to $520,000 and Westchester Square from $320,000 to $425,920. Representatives from each bid requesting assessment increase are present to answer any questions pertaining to their specific requests. However, I'm happy to answer any general questions you may have. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much. Mr. Karras. Good morning, Chair Drum and members of the Finance Committee. I'm Jim Karras here on behalf of Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. Uh, we support this action in the case of the Garment District Alliance, formerly the Fashion Center bid, because it will make available funds that are part of a comprehensive program to ensure Manhattan's garment manufacturing businesses can remain in the city's historic garment center. The Council Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises will hold a hearing tomorrow to contemplate lifting the manufacturing preservation requirements embodied in the Special Garment District Zoning. Manhattan's Garment Center is about to undergo serious changes, and this assessment will help ensure that displacement of the garment industry is not one of those changes. When the city first proposed to lift the garment center zoning preservation requirements in 2017, it sought to assist in the relocation of garment manufacturing businesses from the garment center to Brooklyn Sunset Park neighborhood. The city and garment center bid even committed funds for this purpose. But our office began speaking to the manufacturers and employees in the Garment Center, and it became clear that Manhattan's Garment Center, with its ecosystem of garment-related businesses, needed to remain the core of the fashion industry. Without that core, the New York fashion industry is at risk. The borough president came to emphatically believe that any funds raised by the bid needed to be spent helping businesses thrive in the Garment Center, not relocate out of the district. We knew that if preservation requirements were to be lifted, we would need extensive programs and funding to support and retain the garment manufacturing industry. Early in 2017, we began our outreach to industry representatives, and in May 2017, Council Speaker Johnson and the Borough President's Office formed the Garment Center Steering Committee, which was comprised of elected officials, community boards four and five, the New York City EDC, and representatives of manufacturers, designers, unions, and real estate, including the Garment District Alliance. Their recommendations provided valuable guidance for addressing the needs of the garment industry. Through their collective efforts, we have come a long way from the original proposal to lift the zoning restrictions and not provide any accompanying assistance for the garment industry in Manhattan. Among the recommendations of the steering committee were 
One, to establish a tax incentive program to retain long-term garment production space in the garment center. This is being done now through an EDC and IDA program. Two, work to effectuate a public-private building acquisition. EDC has also taken the lead on this, issuing an RFEI uh, and committing $20 million for the acquisition of a building. Three, support and develop new and existing talent pipelines for the garment-related workforce in mid-Manhattan. Four, support business planning and marketing among garment manufacturers. And five, develop communications platforms to elevate garment manufacturers. We want to thank the Garment District Alliance for working so hard as part of the steering committee and taking its recommendations so seriously. The majority of the increase being requested by the bid is to assist in its commitment to support businesses and especially garment manufacturers and their workers within the bid's boundaries. Originally, as we said, this money was to be used for relocation expenses of manufacturing businesses that left the district. But in September, under the bid director's leadership, the bid voted to redirect this money for programs available to assist businesses within the bid's boundaries. The Garment District Alliance will support garment manufacturing in the area by providing $2.5 million each year to fund efforts that will assist businesses, including garment manufacturers, with workforce development, trainings, and facilitating communications among businesses in the district. This support will be crucial as the zoning protections in the Special Garment District are lifted. We therefore urge you to approve the proposal before you today, but the Garment District Alliance must also commit to work with our office, the Speaker's office, and other stakeholders to design programs that will be part of a long-term effort to foster the continued health of the garment industry. While we understand that no one can guarantee the efficacy and demand for programs 10 years from now, we need assurances that as long as the need to assist the manufacturing and garment-related business in the district continues over the course of the next decade, the bid will work with us to ensure that effective programs are available and funded. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. I want to say we've been joined by Councilmember Francisco Moya, Councilmember Robert Cornegie, Councilmember Brad Lander, and Councilmember Lander has a statement to make. Thank you very much, Chair Drum. Thanks to this uh, esteemed panel. I'll be very brief. I wholeheartedly support uh, what is listed in uh, Blaze's testimony as item 12, the increase for the Park Slope Fifth Avenue from 300,000 to 500,000. It is truly a really a model business improvement district. I confess that I have some anxieties about the public-private approach we take to achieving sanitation and security in our city. Uh, but this is one of the examples that truly engages community, that brings in all stakeholders, and that achieves those goals while really building community, not just for the businesses, not just for the property owners, but for the residents and the entire community. We're lucky to have them, and I urge people to join in voting yes to support them to be able to do that work even better. Thank you. Thank you. We've been joined by Councilmember Keith Powers. Are there any questions? Yes. You already recognized me, but I'll take it twice. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, I just want to thank. I just want to say thank you to the to the uh, the borough president for the work uh, done here, and also I want to welcome those from the Garment District Alliance who are here and for their work. I, I agree with what Councilman Lander said, but certainly a lot of the quality of life issues, even around the, that area, they've been uh, 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 good advocates for uh, the businesses around there to make sure that it's it's a vibrant neighborhood. So I also encourage folks to be supportive. Thanks. Okay, are there any further questions? All right, um, before I ask the clerk to call the roll, as a reminder, the Finance Committee will be meeting next Tuesday, November 20th at 10 a.m. in the 16th floor committee room at 250 Broadway to consider intro 1143, a bill that would authorize the Department of Finance to create three different types of hardship payment plans for low-income homeowners throughout the city who are struggling to pay their property taxes. We expect to hear testimony from the Commissioner of Finance, and I hope that all of my colleagues will be able to join the hearing. And with that, I will ask Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Cumbo. Aye. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, with gratitude to all the work of the Lincoln Square bid um, and their leadership, uh, I, I proudly vote aye and encourage them to continue their great efforts. Thank you. Gordinchik. Aye. Adams. 
Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Matteo. Um, I am voting uh, no on uh, the tax uh, rate reso 612, 613, 614. While I appreciate the council reducing the rate since June, it is still an increase. It's an increase that uh, still seems to get higher and higher. So with that, I'm voting no on those three resolutions and I and the rest. Resolutions 615 and 616 are adopted by the committee, 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. And resolutions 612, 613, and 614 are adopted by a vote of 10 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. And introduction 1144 is adopted by the committee, 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, this meeting is adjourned at... Uh, 1057 in the morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat>